trans movement is the mirror image of Christianity and therefore its natural enemy. In Christianity, the price of admission is admitting that you're not God. The trans movement takes the opposite view. Trans ideology claims dominion over nature itself. We can change the identity we were born with, they will tell you with wild-eyed certainty. Christians can never agree with this statement because these are powers they believe God alone possesses. That unwillingness to agree, that failure to acknowledge a trans person's dominion over nature, incites and enrages some in the trans community. People who believe they're God can't stand to be reminded that they're not. So Christianity and transgender orthodoxy are wholly incompatible theologies. They can never be reconciled. They are on a collision course with each other. One side is likely to draw blood before the other side. Oh, so we're talking about violent rhetoric here. Here's Tucker Carlson talking about uh, dominion over nature and how, you know, these Christians are such good folks. And they had never preach about dominion over anyone else. They talk about being close to God. Weird, because Christianity was used to uh, to uh, um, to excuse the, the usage of enslaved people in our country. Christianity was also used to uh, push through crusades and murder tons of people. Christianity was also used to... Uh, uh, to uh, validate um, what Nazis and Hitler was doing with the Holocaust. Weird how Christianity is used a lot of times for evil things, but you know, blood is never drawn by those Christians, except for every one of those cases. Whatever, it doesn't matter. They're using it now, even when people come and shooting up uh, uh, um, uh, drag shows or people in a club that they don't like. But he's talking about how blood will be drawn by one group and not the other. He wants you to not believe the reality and the things that you've seen and the murdered people in the streets. He's not the only one, though. Matt Walsh likes to echo these types of stupid opinions as well. And he tweeted this. I came to the conclusion years ago. I want you guys to uh, try and look for any um, actual evidence behind the statement besides just his stupid opinion. I came to the conclusion years ago that the trans movement is the greatest evil our country faces. That sounds like your opinion, bro. I only become more and more sure of this fact with each passing day and more and more determined to oppose it until my last breath. You can oppose it all you want, but um, that means your opinion doesn't have to be policy. But you can try and, I guess, incite folks to violence over it because that's what you're looking to do until your dying day. He's not the only one, though, because Michael Knowles posted a bit of a cryptic message since we're talking about violence. And um, oddly, it actually got flagged on Twitter. This is what uh, Knowles posted, uh, a Bible verse down, down there in the middle. Beloved. Never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. So you have to ask yourself, why would he post that? Is he trying to tell followers of his and conservative folks in this movement uh, that they need to not be violent? Because that's what the verse is saying. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. So God is going to get vengeance on these filthy effing trans folks. So you don't have to? I guess that's what you're saying. So if you're saying that, that means you are uh, at least acknowledging that these folks who hate trans people would maybe uh, jump to violence. Some people may think you're trying to incite people to violence, which is why he got flagged on Twitter, which of course uh, Matt Walsh responded to at the top portion of this. And he, uh, he at mentioned Elon Musk. He said, Knowles is suspended for posting a Bible verse. I assume this was a mistake. Can we get this account restored ASAP? Because we need to push some more violent rhetoric. So it's one or the other. Either you're telling folks to not be violent because you know they will, or you're trying to incite them to violence. There's more. Ben Shapiro also tweeted this. If a straight white man murdered a bunch of children at a progressive school in the name of anti-trans politics, it would dominate the news cycle for months and become the center of the 24 presidential cycle. Hey, I've got an actual um, uh, example for you because there's multiple straight white racist men that murder folks all the time. One of them name was Dylan Roof. He ran up in a church. Weird. Christians. Black Christians, though, so they don't count because this is about white supremacy, not Christianity. So when that white guy runs up in a church because he's a rabid racist and murders black folks, we just move on by it, right? Was it a part of the of the 2020 presidential cycle? Was it a deciding factor in that race? Weird, but we can start talking about this. One trans person who went up in this school for whatever reason, and we can find those out. I'm down to read manifestos. I'm down to determine all these motives, and you can have an issue with it. But the same issue that continues to go through all of these is the fact that he had a gun. Who cares, though? We need to make this political. Why we say let's not make it political. There's more, though, because um, 
as they've been suspending some of these accounts, Ben Shapiro then pointed this out as well, too, at mentioning Elon Musk, their lord and savior. He says, looks like a bunch of reporters are being banned from mentioning an upcoming march by trans activists or tweeting news about it. Must be some sort of bizarre mistake. And this is when they've been pushing this trans uh, uh, day of vengeance, which we'll get into in a second. But first, Jordan, <sighs> um, your thoughts here while I try not to curse. I mean, if they want to invoke religion and Christianity to justify their hate, I mean, just look at the book of John from the Bible that some of them, I mean, Shapiro excluded, purport to hold near and dear to their heart. John 15, 12. My command is this, love others as I have loved you. That seems pretty straightforward. And it's coming from the words of, or coming from the mouth of Jesus of Nazareth. So you just, you know, hold that up against them. But it really, once you do, obviously they won't adhere to it because they're in the business of peddling hate for clicks. If they really cared about the identity of mass shooters at large, they would have spent the last 10 years bemoaning the horrors and the threat to society that white cis men pose. But they haven't. Here, they want to focus on the identity of the shooter. Every other mass shooting, it's, let's not politicize this. Thoughts and prayers, think about this, we're so sorry. Now is not the time to take action. We shouldn't be led by emotion in this moment. Here, it's, wow, trans people are a threat to our communities, to our society. We need, and to quote Michael Knowles, just recently at CPAC, we must eradicate transgenderism. They are telling you what they think about a group of people who simply wants to be left alone and live their life just like any other person. They are entitled to that autonomy and freedom. But these people make a business and a living out of peddling hate. It's, it's truly repugnant. It's uh, it's a part of the money making scheme and part of our capitalist society. So they have to go that route because all they know is hate. By the way, I don't remember them mentioning anything about the January 6th violence, the Unite the Right uh, violence that happened out there that killed that uh, that anti that uh, opposing protester. Uh, white supremacist groups that are toting guns at drag shows all over the place, throwing Heil Hitler signs and talking about N words and other derogatory language. Um, uh, maybe the folks who tried to kidnap and plan to kidnap uh, uh, Governor Whitmer up in Michigan. They had plans of kidnapping and murdering her. Are we talking about that too? Because we're talking about this violence and this planning that happens from the Trans Day of Vengeance because that name sounds really dangerous, doesn't it? Oh, they also forgot the fact that uh, right-wing ter homegrown terrorism, white right-wing homegrown terrorism is the number one terroristic threat in the United States. They're not going to talk about any of that stuff. They're going to talk about the Trans Day of Vengeance. And I went to the website since they're talking about how they're being suspended off of Twitter for actually mentioning it. And the Trans Day of Vengeance talks about it's coming up this upcoming weekend. And it says Tran will be hosting an event in D.C., time and location on the 1st at 11 o'clock. The online event will be hosted on that day to be announced. This protest is about unity, not inciting violence. Tran does not encourage violence and it is not welcome at this event. I'm reading this, it's not from there, you guys. That's Marjorie Taylor Greene pushing the same nonsense. But since they're talking about this Tran day of violence, did they put that part in there? No, they didn't put that part in there. I also don't remember uh, them talking about every time they plan these other events. Do you think there was a, a, a note about not being violent when they said they're going to go plan to kidnap a governor of a state that they don't like and murder her? Was there a talk about uh, calm and peace when they brought out their pistols and their rifles and their semi-automatic weapons and came to drag show events and tried to intimidate folks? Was there talk about peace and, and unity and actually trying to put your, your, uh, your thoughts forward when they're at CPAC, as you mentioned, Jordan, talking about eradicating transgenderism? Is there anything peaceful about anything that they're saying? No, but there's this one group that says Trans Day of Vengeance to talk about pushing back on the constant drumbeat of violence and calls for their murder. And that's where they have a problem because I've said this before too. What they're upset is, is anyone not continuing to roll over and just take it? The <sighs> obsession, the obsession that they have with trans people is really bizarre because studies have shown and polls have shown that a vast majority of Americans don't feel the same way. They aren't hyper obsessed with trans people like a handful of right wing media figures are. It's really bizarre. Because look, or like they don't do this with just about any other group of people. Sure, they have animus toward a lot of other groups of people, but they don't zero in on a very, I mean, one and a half percent of the population is trans. 
And you would think in right wing media coverage, it's 50 50. That half the country, like there, people all over the place are transitioning. We need to care about trans people in women's sports. You're a sport. You're a sports guy. When's the last time you remember a, a right wing media figure talking about how much how, outside of this context, how important women's sports are to them? It's been a punchline to them for years. Now, suddenly we have to care at a national level. No, it's because they want to drive hate toward an extremely marginalized and powerless community so they can drive like they can drive clicks through that hate and they can feel better about themselves. And uh, then they can win a couple of elections based off it as well, which I guess they've done to a certain extent. You guys remember Mr. Potato Head? Remember the migrant buses that are coming up? There's always something new.